David? Yes, 25 people. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to start then. Get going right away. Hey, good to see you all tonight. David, thank you for uh, being the man at the controls once again. You're uh, welcome. Appreciate your help there. For those of you who uh, were uh, not on before, uh, just a couple of uh, rules. You're going to see us on the screen. You won't be able to see each other. You can still communicate. Uh, there's a chat function in here, a Q&A function. Should be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have questions that you want to type in there and send out, uh, David will kind of monitor that. We will see that as well. So just look at that. Use that to, to your advantage. Um, we'll try and uh, leave some room at the end to answer some of those questions. If we don't get to them, um, we'll get back to you. I mean, we'll email you later tonight or the next day, try and give you some answers to all of that to make sure that, uh, that you get those questions uh, answered. So uh, I think that probably takes care of those details uh, there. Um, I'll just start out with uh, saying thank you for support during this time, your support during this time. Um, I know you have, uh, many of you have sent words of encouragement, uh, called us, text us, email us, whatever. Thank you so much for that. Uh, you know, sometimes you get to the office in the morning and we see each other a lot and uh, staff meeting or pastors meetings. And uh, I know we will always say, you know, this is week like 1 million that we're in right now, but it helps to know that you are uh, communicating or thinking of us, praying for us and, uh, we do appreciate that. Thank you for uh, your continued good giving. Uh, Blair might say something about that in a little bit as he talks, but uh, uh, we really are blessed to have people at Grace who are faithful in their giving and consistent and generous. Uh, so thank you for that. Every once in a while, someone shows up at church, brings in a check. Uh, it's great to be able to talk to you and, and thank you for that personally. So uh, uh, we appreciate that. Okay, I'll start out tonight uh, with the big question that most people are probably asking. Um, you know, when are we going to start meeting again? You all know that uh, Governor Abbott on uh, Monday issued uh, G818 and we talked a little bit about how these things are going to get started again. Uh, so let me give you some of the details of uh, where we're going with this. All of our decisions uh, really based on three different things. First of all, the proclamation of the governor. Uh, we've got a number of uh, documents from the city of Allen, the fire department, uh, the COVID response team, they're weighing in. In fact, one of the documents that uh, uh, we looked at heavily was uh, an actual checklist for when you can bring your church uh, back together. You know, so they're being very specific of saying, these are the things you can do. Um, and uh, also the Collin County Health Department and uh, Chris Hill, the judge, you know, coordinates a number of things. All of our decisions are completely in line uh, and to some extent, maybe even a little bit more strict. Uh, I'll explain that, you know, as we walk through it. Uh, it gives us quite a bit of latitude as a church to work with in this. So I don't want any of you thinking, oh man, the church is just, you know, going against the rules or anything like that. Um, you know, we're following pretty closely to uh, all the uh, uh, you know, proclamations that have been made so far. So here's the plan. Let me first start out simply with making a, a general statement that I think applies in, in every situation. And it's from uh, the minimum standard health protocol for churches coming back uh, together. We strongly encourage the at-risk population to watch or participate in the service remotely. That's going to be the standard line. Uh, if you are not feeling well, I don't care if, if, if you don't know if you have COVID-19 or what. If you aren't feeling well, you got a runny nose, you got a cough, you, got, you stay away from the building for the time being. Uh, that's just the way it is. If you're in that at-risk uh, population, uh, 65 and older or health conditions, I think you know who you are, uh, you know, please, Please, uh, you know, if you can at all possible, uh, stay at home. Uh, that's your call in the end, but uh, we're going to make that statement that you need to, uh, to stay at home. And if you know that you have been exposed or in a group setting uh, in any way in the last couple of weeks, uh, you aren't showing symptoms, but 
there's a potential that you could have come into contact with someone. Again, don't take the, the risk, stay at home. Um, so that being said, uh, here's the plan. Beginning May 10, which is not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, May 10, which happens to be Mother's Day, uh, we will allow limited use of the building uh, for public gathering on Sunday mornings. We're gonna follow what would be considered the phase one strict uh, social distancing guidelines. Um, we are in the process right now of uh, uh, putting that out there so that you know very clearly what those are. Um, you know, six feet distancing between people, very limited, well, no, no contact, you know, person to person, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, again, if you have any, I don't think you have any questions really about what those things are. Uh, but we will allow people back in the building on May 10. Now, we aren't going to advertise this as, oh, we're open. We're really just taking this first step, kind of a, a, a testing ground to see what happens. We'll have sanctuary set up with the chairs spaced appropriately. Uh, we will have someone there who's really in charge of seating so that, uh, you know, if you come there, we might very well tell you where you're going to sit. Families can sit together and we will require, you know, if you come with someone, you can sit by them, but we're not allowing people just to sit randomly wherever they want to go. Uh, if you're in the building, you're going to follow the rules of where you're going to sit. Uh, we won't have a lot of extra stuff going on. You come in the building, you sit down, you go out. Uh, you come in one way, you go out another way. So we're being extremely cautious about how we uh, open this up. Um, our top priority, uh, really through the month of May, will continue to be our video broadcast. Uh, we've worked really hard on that. I think we're doing a top-notch job. Every week, uh, Bill and the team make uh, upgrades to that. Uh, so that's going to be our priority, which would mean if you choose uh, to attend on May 10, you're going to be watching our video production, which means we'll take the breaks. Uh, we'll be operating as if we're uh, speaking to an online audience. It's not going to be a worship service, uh, as you re perhaps remember uh, in the past. Our primary audience is still going to be the, uh, uh, the people who watch on YouTube. So, uh, you know, we'll operate as we would that morning. It also means that there's some ground rules. We need it quiet in that place. We need you to, if you're going to be there, you need to be there by 1045 or the doors basically get locked. Uh, we'll have no one coming in, no one going out during that time uh, because it is a, a, a production setting for video. Uh, so we need those things uh, to happen. Again, if you can't comply with that right now, you just you know, need to stay at home and watch uh, as we pull this thing together. And there will be no adult classes, uh, no children's ministry or anything going on in the building at this point. In fact, phase three will be locked, shut down on Sunday, so you can't even go in there uh, and, uh, you know, just go in and go out of the building. It's pretty simple that way. But it's our first step of getting things started. Uh, if you feel comfortable, if you'd like to, uh, you know, kind of help us in this process, work things through, uh, because we're going to learn a couple things the first couple weeks of what works and what doesn't work. Um, but we want you to uh, uh, take responsibility to that extent uh, that if we're inviting you in, then you follow the rules we set. And we're doing this uh, as a witness to the community for the protection of people in the body, but as a first step towards uh, getting things going, and we feel that that's the, the least we can do. And then as uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the state, moves towards phase two, we'll reassess that once again and see uh, what can go on from there, okay? Uh, we're also addressing health protocol for the, uh, the people in the facility and the facility itself, the cleaning of the facility, the protection of the facility. Uh, from this point on, we hope to send you updates on Tuesday, somehow probably by email, uh, Tuesday updates on what the status of the weekend um, will look like. As far as the church building itself, uh, you know, the church is open, uh, but by restriction, we've not been allowed to meet with uh, any more than 10 people. 
Um, this does allow us to use the building, again, following uh, distancing guidelines, spacing and all that stuff. Size is not as big of an issue. Uh, in some instances, you've heard the phrase, there's a 25% occupancy uh, cap. Uh, our spacing is not by percentage, it's limited to uh, how many people we can get in a certain area and still maintain social distance. Uh, so, you know, if you have a ministry group or a, a small group that wants to use the facility, you are welcome to use the facility. Uh, you just need to maintain your social distance, uh, you know, the guidelines that we're following there. A good example of that is uh, when we've had staff meeting, we will meet in 309, which is the room way in the back, and we all get a table. Works out great. Big room, we all have space, we all get our own table. Uh, we aren't breaking any, you know, rules or, uh, uh, you know, going against any recommendations uh, to that extent. Now, I will mention the youth ministry uh, as a uh, special um, uh, condition or different than this. Wes, I'm going to let you communicate that with your people. Uh, I know you've got a plan uh, that we've talked about. I'm going to let you get that out to them so that they know exactly what's going to happen there as well. Um, so small groups, you know, if you're a small group leader and, and Bill will support this and, uh, you know, give you more direction, you know, we are encouraging you to meet. You have to maintain those social distance guidelines, but I've, I've heard, you know, there's groups that meet in back to church in the parking lot. Uh, this would give you, I guess, uh, permission to come within into the building as long as you maintain uh, the social distancing guidelines. You can meet again. So, uh, you know, consider that as well. Uh, two questions that we had to ask in all of this. First one is, uh, can we do it? The second question is, should we do it? Uh, <laughs> you know, they aren't always the same. Uh, and we've thought through all of these things, I think, very carefully. And uh, the decisions that we're making now I believe are in the best forward, best interest of the church to move forward. Uh, uh, and again, if you don't feel comfortable uh, with this, uh, that is certainly your right. Uh, but we do feel that now is the time to take a little bit of a step of faith, still complying with all the guidelines that we have been given. We're following the checklist and uh, we're, we're moving ahead in this step. Again, starting May 10 is the big week when we would say that the building is uh, technically open uh, for people to come in. Now, we'll be watching space, and here's the bottom line. Uh, building won't open until 10, or 10, 15. You can't get in there until then. Uh, if you come in, uh, you need to be in, I would say, by 10.35. Is that about correct, Bill? 10.35, you need to be seated in your place at 10.35. Uh, and then uh, we'll kind of start shutting stuff down because we need to get ready for production. And uh, we expect you to stay seated at that time in the place, uh, not high-fiving each other. Uh, again, I, I know you all want to say amen and clap to every point I make and applaud the music. I know that's just your nature. Yeah, someone's got to laugh about that out there. But, uh, we do need it a little bit quiet because we are producing a, uh, a live uh, uh, stream at that point. So that's kind of how it looks. We'll have people to guide you through all of the steps. Uh, we want to put on a big welcome, uh, but uh, guaranteed we aren't going to hug you. Uh, we aren't even going to high five you, but we're going to let you know that we're glad that you're still a part of you know what's going on here at Grace and God is using that to grow the ministry. So uh, again, if you got some questions, uh, pop them up there. Uh, we'll be getting this in written form in one way or another in the next few days to let everyone know. But uh, we're going to pass the baton around and I'm going to give every pastor a quick chance to uh, uh, update or speak to any of those issues or other things that are going on. I guess we're starting with Wes today, aren't we? End of the alphabet. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Uh, definitely miss everybody. Um, uh, the, the youth are still meeting on Wednesday night with Zoom meetings and uh, looking forward to uh, getting together again. But I uh, just want to, first of all, I, I, I want to thank the body uh, for your faithful giving uh, during this time. I know that we've been extremely, um, well, I wouldn't say we've cut back, but we've, we've, we've just even been more frugal 
and uh, with, with the limitations that we've had, and it's been hard to connect with teens, uh, we were able to uh, purchase some, uh, some, some, some gift bags for them. And what these have, have in them is our devotionals. And I've got my small group leaders, I've got like 12 or 13 small group leaders passing these out and distributing them door to door. Uh, if you are on this call and you have a, a, a son or daughter or, or multiple teens in the ministry and they have not received theirs yet, that's okay. Uh, they're coming. Uh, I just got them this, this last, uh, late, late this last week, last week, uh, Friday or Saturday, and we're still distributing them to our small group leaders. But, uh, that, that's absolutely a, 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 a praise and thank you really to the, the body for faithfully supporting us financially because that wasn't cheap. And, uh, but I, I do believe it's a great way to connect, uh, not just with our regular teens, but some who maybe are a little bit um, on the fringe, you know, maybe newer to the ministry. And it's hard. I don't even, you know, I've got addresses for them, but they're, they're not well connected yet. And so we've, we've really wanted to continue to do that well, because that's something our ministry has always done very well. And uh, so that really provided that avenue. Um, what are we going to continue to do? That was one uh, question Joel wanted wanted uh, all of us to, to answer. So one thing we're going to continue to do is, is we're, we're going to um, break down our group even smaller. I think that's one thing that for those of you who have been around for the last decade or so or about a decade ago, you know, we really had a, a large growth in the ministry, uh, so some exponential growth. And what that created was, was um, the excitement with the size, but sometimes some distance. Uh, especially with, with some kids that may just had a hard time connecting with an individual or two. And, and so we're, we've been able to really um, just divide up the group very well. And uh, our leaders, especially our ladies, are doing a great job um, of really connecting uh, weekly. And so I think that's a, a very important thing that we're able to do. I'm, I'm leaning on my leaders, there's no doubt. But they have really stepped up. And that's, again, just a real praise uh, that the body... Um, and as far as what we're learning, um, well, we're, we're learning to be flexible. And here's something I'm learning. I, I will say this. I, Joel asked this question. It's probably not the response that he thought I would give. But um, here's what I'm learning. I'm learning that even though teenagers have grown up with this, um, that's not a substitute for face-to-face for -face or person-to-person, in-person um, contact. Uh, they, they, they are absolutely tiring of that. Uh, no matter how much we try and how much we do, uh, it is obvious uh, with Gen Z that they are just as relational as anybody that in the generations that God's created. We are created to, to be together, and uh, that's more than just virtually. And I'm seeing that because they, they want to, uh, I know somebody had a drive-by party the other day, and it was very difficult not to, for people not to get out and hug people and some did anyway and that was you know that was okay by the by all the parents involved but uh, that's what I'm learning I'm learning that teenagers don't just want to sit on their phone that they that they want to engage face to face and actually person to person in person with their with their friends and with their adult leaders so uh, that's that's been good I mean it's been good for for us as leaders to evaluate that and and recognize um, where we need to go from here so I guess about All it. Right. Thank you, uh, Wes. Bill, you're next on my screen. All right. Um, so I know that right now, when it comes to small groups, just like you've said, I'm just going to reiterate what, what Joel just said. Um, you know, where groups can meet, just just maintain what what the governor has kind of already thrown down uh, to keep us as safe as possible. The biggest reason why is because you guys matter to us, and we would hate to see someone get sick. Uh, because someone wants to get a hug. Uh, and gosh, I'm, I'm a huge hugger. You guys know that. And so this is like a, this is like a, you know, an extrovert's nightmare that we're going through right now, but know that, um, but, you know, just, just keep up with those guidelines uh, as per, you know, what, what the church said. I know, honestly, uh, we would love to, to see us get back together as soon as possible, but, you know, you use, use that wisdom and discretion, get together, uh, spend time, but also, you know, maintain social distancing, uh, as per, as per needed, um, you know, and, uh, I would say, you know, at this point, uh, how do I put it? We we're talking about this today, but you know, there's no shame in, in, uh, you know, that, that, that fear of, do I wear a mask? Do I not wear a mask? Do I wear gloves? I mean, no one just do what you need to do. Uh, we want to see your faces. We love you. So do what you think you need to do. Um, uh, when, when it, when it comes to that, for those classes, 
uh, you know, that we were, we were kind of, we were already going to move to Joel. I think you mentioned this a little bit. We were already going to move uh, in June to one service. And so we were going to cancel class, kind of close out classes for this, for this period of time. But right now, if you are doing a class, if you're doing a Sunday morning uh, group or, you know, a connection group, uh, what any of those, we're going to continue those on zoom. So you're welcome to continue those on zoom as well. For those who are using those, you know, uh, I know our, our Peters has been, I've been getting those, those emails Art, and I know that the others have been doing that as well, but um, you can continue those on zoom as long as you need to. Again, the church has an account that you are welcome to use. Uh, so if you need that email me bill at grace dash EFC dot dot org so that we can get that for you. Cause if you cannot meet on the Sunday morning, cause others are, there's so many other times you can meet during the week. So please uh, get a hold of me so that you can continue to have connection with your group. We want you to stay connected as much as possible. Um, when it comes to, I guess, everything else, you know, just like you said, Joel, the worship stuff, we'd love to see some of you next week. Um, but we don't want to, we don't want to force you in that. And uh, so, but if you can be there, we'd love to have you be a part of it. Honestly, worshiping in a, in a room with three people is really weird. So it'd be nice to see some faces in there. So, uh, if you can make it great, but we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can to keep you guys distance. Uh, so, so that no one is, uh, is, is getting, getting sick or anything like that, that we're, that we're doing all we can to try and, to try and stop that. Um, I, I think I'm answering all the questions, Joel. I don't know. I'm probably going to fail this test because I forgot some of them as I'm typing questions. But uh, what I would say is what I've been learning is our, is the world is hopeless. And when this fear goes away, there's another fear. And this was an opportunity for us to get ready, for us to remember why we do what we do, for us to share hope with hopeless people. That's what I keep realizing is this is going to be, and this is one of the next things that people have been afraid of. So I think now is an opportunity for us to get ready for the next time that someone's going to be afraid. Who knows if it's going to be chicken because everyone's saying meat is running out, which it's not going to run out. People, there's still cows that are being created. Hamburgers are going to be eaten. So what I'm saying, there's always going to be something to be afraid of, but we have the answer. And I feel like God has allowed us to shine brighter in a hopeless world. And so that's what God's been teaching me right, right now. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Uh, yeah, you, I think you covered it all. And, uh, you know, we're, we are looking forward to even the transition. There's going to be some challenges there, but, uh, you know, that, that, that's all good. We'll, we'll grow from it and we'll grow through it. So, uh, you know, we're learning a lot about ourselves, And that's one of the reasons that I keep asking the question, what are we learning from this? Uh, I think we need to take some of those lessons to heart and connect with each other in more in various ways. So, Pastor Blair, you're on the bottom. A is last today. Abbott uh, gets the, the last word, I guess. Well, I don't know if it'll be the last word, but uh, we'll, sure we'll jump through be. some here. here. So... Uh, um, you know, the, the couple of questions, right? What are we learning? What do we have to look forward to? Um, the learning stuff, I guess one of the things that I've kind of been reminded of uh, personally is, you know, there are some important, some important things to do as we walk through, you know, crisis situations and really any day of life, right? We need to take care of ourselves. We need to be healthy. So, you know, we, we do some of the things that we do regularly. And we keep some of those, uh, hopefully, routines and not ruts. But are we praying regularly? Uh, do we exercise, whether that's just getting out and taking a walk or, you know, for those of you who are so inclined to do an insanity program or something like that, are we really, uh, you know, getting the, the exercise we need? Because, hey, exercise is a great stress reliever, right? It, it kind of, God designed us that way. You know, do I get enough sleep? Am I eating well? Now, I, I've not caught up to Wes yet. You know, he's he's uh, been getting healthy and, and doing that stuff. So he's inspired me to move forward that way. But, uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm working on it. I've, I've set some goals and we'll work on accomplishing those things, right? Uh, am I staying connected? You know, I, I Diane and I have a great time with our small group together. When we do those things. So uh, I, I, we stay connected with small group. You stay connected with family as you can. Again, practicing all those social distancing things and, and all of that, but, but we stay connected with everybody, you know, and those people you're connected with really is your ministry field. So that gives us opportunities to serve others as we're doing that. And then just guarding our hearts and our minds, 
you know, the enemy will work overtime here when we're in crisis mode uh, to get us to think differently uh, or to distract our hearts from things that it should be uh, for. So just working on those things and just uh, making that a part of my daily routine so that uh, I can be prepared to serve the way he, uh, the way he wants me to. You know, other things I've been learning, consistent small touches mean a lot. You know, Bill mentioned that uh, we're being the light and Diana shared something with, uh, with me today after we did our, our donuts, uh, our drive-through donuts today. There was a post uh, by someone out on their Facebook page. And uh, basically, I just wanna read it for us. Huge shout out to our kids preschool and the amazing church that supports it. Express at, great, at Grace Church. Through this quarantine, they have shined the brightest light on a dark situation. Through many dri drive through fun packs, teacher videos for their classes, teachers dropping off goodies at their students' house, support, encouragement, drive through family donuts, and much more, they have blessed our family and community tremendously. Last week, we did a drive through thank you parade for the staff, but thank you will never be enough. We love and miss you, Jim, and, and you know, they did the hashtag be the light. And it's just encouraging to realize that we're still out there touching people's lives. And we may say, hey, we're just doing what we can, but it makes a difference uh, to our gym families. At, at one of those drop-offs, uh, Diana got, a, got a, uh, a note from the mom that uh, as they were driving off from picking up their little fun pack that day, the four-year-old said to her mom, hey, that filled my love tank. And those are the kinds of things that we're trying to do just by serving our community. So, you know, those consistent small touches mean a lot. Whether we think of them as big things or not, God uses them to touch people's lives. So keep doing that. You know, we saw on Sunday the door drop ministry that the Warners have been doing. Such an encouragement. We do things that God asks us to do. And, you know, just go do it. Right? Don't, don't wait for us to create a program to do stuff like that. We just go out and we're just being Christ where we're at. Yeah, well, one of the other things uh, I learned is that, you know, growth, even when we haven't solicited it, it's a good thing. You know, the, the fact that we're live streaming now, we, you know, Bill and the team have made a number of strides. And it's exciting to see what God has done. And while we may have thought about it, you know, God kind of put us in a situation where it's like, hey, you just need to take care of this. Otherwise, we're not able to connect with you guys. Um, and so we want to do that. Uh, you know, I'm very proud of Lori. I hope uh, all you Grace Kids parents are watching the lessons. Um, you know, I, I kind of chuckled last week when uh, she had everybody in the family lay down on the floor as part of the lesson, just talking through those things, uh, making uh, our, our philosophy of partnering with parents really come to light because, you know, we don't get the privilege of, you know, ministering to your kids directly now, but we can minister to families and we want to continue to do that stuff. So, you know, Joel mentioned I might say something <clears throat> about giving stuff and I know Wes said, thank you for your support. I would say that too. Just so you guys know, we've received over $10,000 for our benevolence fund in the last six weeks. That's huge. And that's you all doing the things that Joel was talking about. Hey, we share what we have. And, you know, while we haven't necessarily had to have a lot of that going out now, it may be a little while before people really have a need. So, you know, if you have a need, remember Grace Cares at grace-efc.org. Let us know about it. We want to be, you know, uh, helping you know, being the body, you, you look at what happened in Acts chapter two and how the body function or the, the church functioned in the early church. We were sharing what we had in common. So doing that stuff. Uh, if you're a number cruncher guy, the I'm keeping track of a six week average, uh, a rolling six weeks. So I'll just look back at the last six weeks of giving. And, and so far we're averaging uh, 15,800 dollars $15, in our six week weekly average. If I look at one week and then the next week, just the weekly totals, I'll get really happy and I'll get really uh, maybe not as happy. Uh, that's why I'm trying to look at it that way. So we're, we're nearly meeting what we need uh, to, to meet our contractual obligations and our moral obligations as we've uh, kind of
taken our, our spending plan and worked through that. So, you know, uh, <clears throat> we've seen a couple people who, you know, God is providing in amazing ways. Uh, you know, some people who have uh, planned ahead uh, just sent their stimulus checks to the church and said, hey, we're okay. We're got what we need. So we didn't know what to do with this. So we want to give it to the church. It's just exciting to see what God is doing as, as he's using our people. So, you know, on, on a very practical uh, method, and you'll see this when you, you come back uh, on the 10th, if you come or whenever you drive by the church, there used to be two trees in front. Uh, the tree that I was on the west end was half dead. So last week we had said some guys and uh, came in uh, yesterday morning and the tree was gone. And it's cut up, it's in the back by the, by the fire pit and will become a bonfire later. But, you know, some guys were just able to come out and did their thing. And so that ugly looking tree at the front of our property is now, uh, so all those kind of things just remind me that as a body, we're a faithful people and we're a generous people. And that's where we're reflecting uh, who God is and, and living that stuff out. So we've got no end to ministry uh, opportunities around us. You just keep our eyes open for those things. Uh, and uh, the enemy's busy trying to create issues, you know, in times like this, when you, you look at information, they talk about, you know, uh, child abuse goes up because everyone's in one place or spousal abuse goes up or, you know, there's all kinds of things that the enemy is using to try and, uh, what is it, kill, steal, and destroy, which is what the enemy tries to do. And, and we have the answer to that. And uh, we're thankful that, that God gives us a grace to live those ways. So those are some of those things that I'm learning. Uh, and uh, as far as what's ahead of us, Joel, uh, we are planning summer camps right now. Uh, when we get to June and July, uh, we don't know. Situation is fluid, but until someone tells us we can't, we're going to try and, uh, and have our summer camps. We don't know yet if Sky Ranch is able to do that. We're probably got to wait a few more weeks before they definitely confirm whether that week of camp that, they're, that we're trying to bring to Lucas will actually happen at Grace. But uh, we'll wait on them, and once we know, we'll let you know. The Sabine Creek camp for the preteens, we're still waiting to hear from them. Are they going to host that camp? And, you know, Lori might be getting in touch with you to see, hey, even if they open it up, are you ready to send your kids there? That's, that's a parental decision, and we will support you guys regardless of, of what you decide there. But uh, for our Grace Kids summer camps, we're going to push that registration closer into June when we know more. So uh, it will just be communicate with you about those types of things. And then uh, what's ahead of us? Probably more change, um, which is our opportunity to growth. Um, you know, as we move through these phases of reopening, you know, we'll still be asked to do things we don't even haven't even thought about yet where we need to do things differently. So be gracious with us. We will lead in the way that we best feel uh, expresses the most care and, and shepherds you all well. So uh, uh, be gracious with us, be flexible. Um, and then, you know, hey, at Grace Kids, you know, the Grace Kids commitments, you're going to be obedient, you're going to be kind, you're going to be loving, and you're going to be your best. Those are the kinds of things that we would hope that not only our kids do, but we do that as adults as well. And, uh, you know, I'm going to guess that we're going to grow not only collectively as a church, but that growth stuff will also happen within us individually. And when that happens, we want to hear those stories. I hope you were as touched as I was by Eric and Leslie's story on Sunday. Uh, we want to hear those stories. If you have stories to share, get in touch with me. We'll find times to schedule and, and get you recorded so that we can uh, share more stories and encourage the body as we see what God's doing in and through each one of us. So, hey, uh, Thank you, Blair. Okay, well, we got, I want to, yeah. we I got want to turn least. back to Bill real quick because I call Bill Mr. Hope. You know, he's he's bringing hope to a dark world. So, Bill, tell tell him about an opportunity we have to spread hope. Yeah, so we still need you guys to uh, send us uh, your whatever it is. If it's a 
quick 15 second video that shares something you've been doing or pictures uh, to hope is stronger at grace-efc.org so that we can begin to, to how I say like announce it, not just, uh, you know, like one-on-one, -on -one, but, but to those around us, to the world around us, to share with what, with what God is doing, the bigger thing of what Jesus is doing in, in, in and around you uh, every week. And we just want to share that with people. So send us your stuff. If you guys are taking time as a family, like you've never taken before, send us a little, little picture of, Hey, family time. We've had 30 family dinners together, whatever it is, like share those things with us. There's nothing too insignificant about these moments that you can take the time to, to share that hope with others who in the midst of this, who are, who are grieving and are lonely, are finding some kind of joy in the midst of everything else around them. So they need to hear from you. We need to hear from you. So send that out. We also, I think, Joel, you want to talk about the signs? No, you go ahead. You got it. All right. So going with that, we we're making some, we, we've had some signs that are made up. I don't know when they're going to be in, right, Joel? They should be in the next. I think they'll be in tomorrow. Okay, perfect. They should be in tomorrow, but they say hope is stronger. Um, no, we're not competing with Church 1132 that they say hope is here. We are just saying hope is stronger. And so if you want some of those, you know, if you want one for your yard, um, I don't know how many we've actually made, but I think you can come by the office and pick up one, correct? That'd be correct. We'll let them know when they're out. We'll send you an email indicating, hey, they're here. You can come pick them up. But we'd love to have you there because, again, we believe our people are, our people are hopeless and we have the hope. And it's just to create a conversation with your neighbors, with those who pass by, you're talking to say, what do you mean hope is stronger? It gives you an opportunity to have a jumping point to share the hope of Jesus and how he's changed your life. Thank you, Bill. Hey, you're welcome. Hey, I've, I've got a few questions up on the screen that I just want to touch on uh, very quickly, and then we'll give everyone a last chance to jump in there. Uh, one question was asked, what's the point of opening so early? Why not just wait until we can all be safer? That is a good question. Uh, I spend a lot of time reading material. I had an extensive uh, Zoom call this afternoon with a lot of pastors. Uh, you know, they're, they're all looking for the right time to open. Uh, some of them that I was on with today, uh, they're, they're words out there right now. They're opening, opening, officially opening this weekend. They're trying to pack their place. You know, I think that's too early. I had one pastor on there said they've made a decision. They aren't opening until January of 2021. For, uh, for worship again. They're just canceling everything till 2021. I think that's too late. Uh, you know, when is the right place when we can all be safer? I think safety comes in the preparations we make, the uh, protocol we follow to keep everyone safe, uh, and we're gonna do our best. And uh, truthfully, I would say, if, if anyone has any concerns or questions about their safety, uh, they should not uh, risk that then. Uh, you know, we aren't, we aren't forcing anyone to come out, uh, not at all. If you have any question about your safety, please don't come out. We're going to follow the guidelines uh, given to us by, as I said before, the city of Allen, the fire department, the COVID response team, the, the state of Texas, Collin County. And in fact, you know, to some extent in a conference call with the um, one of the government guys yesterday, they're asking churches, they're asking churches to take a little bit of the lead in getting this thing going uh, because they recognize uh, that the churches have an influence and there is a spiritual void that is creating a hole of darkness right now. Uh, again, this, this comment was probably made by a, a, a Christian, but he's just saying, look, we've got to, when we talk about businesses, we talk about shops, we talk about that. We've got to start talking about how churches can continue to be or to move towards engaging their people once again in a familiar way. So, I mean, he didn't come right on and say, say, I need you guys to open. He just said, please take every step you can take to prepare the way to get your people connected again uh, by bringing them together. So that's why we're, we're moving as we are ever so carefully. Uh, again, if you aren't comfortable, please don't risk it at all. Second question, is there a limit to the number of people who can be allowed to enter? Yes, there is. We don't have a physical, a, a specific number, but when we reach the point where our space limitations are such where we can't social distance, uh, it's closed. 
Uh, we can send people over to uh, room 115, the old fellowship hall, or the refuge room. You can hang out in there. Or we can, you know, say, hey, thanks for coming out. God bless you. Go home, and you can still catch this thing online if you hurry. Uh, we aren't going to risk that. Uh, you know, we will follow those guidelines. And uh, so the, we don't know what that number is yet. Thursday, we're probably going to start setting up chairs and creating social distance space to know what that looks like. Last question, the annual shepherding session is going to be held on May 17, 6.30 p.m. Same format as we're using right now, Zoom meeting. Uh, we're going to continue with that. That will be our format uh, in which we conduct our uh, business. And it will be, to some extent, an update again, just like we're doing now. Anyone else out there? Yeah, we got a few more questions, Joel. Um, a couple people were saying that they weren't able to join at the top of the uh, hour. So is, um, if you have a recap or is there a place that they can go to get the salient points of when church is opening because they missed the beginning? Yeah, we'll, we'll put that all probably on the web, on the web page. Okay. Um, another question is, would it be possible to have a Sunday e-bulletin that, that contains what we should see in a physical bulletin? Uh, yeah, you know, I think we're, we're taking steps toward that right now. Um, uh, we have not produced it yet. Again, some of that requires a different uh, uh, program uh, that, you know, that we've got to develop and different way to format. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff that would be in the bulletin right now, truthfully, uh, isn't in the bulletin. <laughs> we don't... <laughs> Uh, but we can come up with some, you know, as we work in that direction. In fact, just FYI, uh, one of the recommendations as we move forward is that churches don't print a paper bulletin anymore. So we are working towards doing that all online. Uh, it'd be a great excuse for y'all to bring your phones to church because that's where the bulletin will be on the phone. Hey, Joel, if I can just jump in with one thing there too. If someone's looking for any specific information that they would normally see in the bulletin and it's not on the website, if you got a question, just email any one of us, uh, depending on what ministry it's related to. Any of us pastors would be happy to, to get you answers to questions if we don't have them and, and just uh, uh, make sure you know what you need to know. Absolutely. The question's all cleared up. Yeah, I think I think that's all of them. We had um, at seven, and we went through all of them in one fell swoop. Hey, for again, you know, I've been doing some of the numbers stuff. Uh, so, in case any of you were curious, we distributed nearly 500 donuts today at Drive Through Donuts. Uh, I don't know the number of cars because I wasn't counting cars as we were trying to get them through the line, but it was a great day and uh, quite a privilege to be able to do that. And uh, you know, the other thing that was part of that is we were able to bless the people at Family Donuts by saying, hey, get us 42 dozen donuts. I, I don't think they've had a day like that in quite a while in their business. So uh, things we can do to impact our community. And so uh, that, that was a fun day today. You know, one of the things that I'll just add on to that, I don't think anyone said it earlier, was in that crowd today, uh, the fire department came out with uh, two of their trucks, and uh, so we gave the donut firemen the donuts, and I mean they were just just thrilled to be. We also had the sheriff come out, uh, not to uh, say anything bad. I mean he was just. I talked to him a little while as he was parked out there. He said, "Hey, this is great. You know, do what you can to uh, uh, get people engaged, smiling again." Uh, he didn't take any of our donuts. He said something about. What do you say about he doesn't eat that junk? He offended all of us. Lean, lean and trim. <laughs> but he was, you know, he just loved watching what was going on there. And uh, it was really neat to see uh, him come out as well. Okay, I don't see anything else. Oh, is, there, is there another question out there yet? Oh, well, that's your welcome. Thank you for doing this. I hope you pick up those signs, uh, you know, uh, hope is stronger, and uh, even that can be a testimony to your neighbors. Uh, you know, wherever you live, uh, it just says something that hope is stronger. Maybe someone would come out and say, well, what do you mean by that? Gives you an opportunity to share why hope is stronger than all of this.
You know, again, I'm just convinced and, and as I spend time with people, especially other pastors, and we analyze and assess, we are convinced that we're going to come out stronger in the things that really matter uh, for the long haul. It's going to take a while, uh, but, uh, but we're convinced that, uh, you know, God is going to do great things as we uh, seek to make the right des decisions in ministry and take the right steps in faith uh, for his glory. So uh, uh, thank you all for being a part of tonight. Again, check out the website. If you have care needs, prayer needs, anything, um, you know, if you're looking for something to do to help out around church with cleaning right now, you know, as we move in this direction, uh, we're probably going to need some extra help with the, we've got the whole church deep clean, steam cleaned carpet, but, uh, you know, wiping stuff down again, etc. Talk to Blair. He'll help you out with that. Or Toria, she can give you a job too. And uh, we're just looking forward to the point when uh, we can all be back together again. So thank you all for uh, giving us your time tonight. Uh, we will, uh, you know, the next meeting, at, well, it'd probably be the 17th shepherding session. But in the meantime, every Tuesday, we hope to send out a ministry update as to what's happening and, uh, you know, keep you up to date, keep you in the loop. Make sure you're checking your email, uh, reading those e-blasts and being a part of what God is doing here, okay? Hey, thank you, David, for monitoring all of this. You're welcome. Take care, guys. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great night now.